Hey guys, in this video I want to go ahead and cover it pretty much just the basics of editor utilities. So what I'm referring to is if we go to the content browser here and we right click, go to editor utilities. In this case we're going to be not focusing on the widget but the blueprint. And for the case of this we're going to be building out a asset action utility. Now we're going to be using this for a real world solution. So I have a problem and I need to fix it. So problem being, again this is scaled back drastically. Let me go to this guy that has just one. So for example, the attacker. So here I have my aim socket on it, rotation zeroed out. So let's say you just import a bunch of optics and you're knocking them out. So if I add the attacker and I go to aim with it, you can see it's rotated. So it's rotated on the Z axis and we need to basically correct that to where it's pointing forward. So you can see it's pointing to the right towards me. We need it rotated at 90 degrees on the yaw. So we're going to go ahead and set up a way to pretty much automate this process. So to begin, let's just go ahead and create our script. So editor utilities, utility blueprint, and asset action utility. I'm going to call this one optic utilities and open it up. Did not mean to close the attack and reopen. There we go. Okay, so to begin, you have basically an empty blueprint. Now to start, the idea behind this is your utilities here. So if I go ahead and I'll just add a new function, call it example. If I go through and I right click on any asset, you'll now see scripted asset actions and we now have our example function. And that goes for pretty much any type of asset we have that function. However, the one we want to change is going to be all static meshes. And technically this could work for skeletal too, but the way Unreal Engine handles between static and skeletal is not the uh, it's stupid. But anyways, so we're going to create one just for statics for the time being, and this can effortlessly be converted to skeletal as well. So what we want to do is under functions, we want to override get supported class. Now by default, this will pretty much return everything. So what we want to pass in is the type that we want to pretty much have it run on. So for example, if I right click on a static mesh, I want it to appear. If I right click on a material, I do not want it to appear. That's kind of the logic here. So if we go and we search for a static mesh, scroll down, here we have static mesh, compile, save. Now we right click on the static mesh, we have the option. Right click on the material, as you can see it is not there. So that is basically the, oh, yeah, the goal here. So we've achieved that, now we want to go ahead and set up the logic that goes through our selections and makes the needed changes. So we're going to rename this one to correct s underscore aim socket. I guess better yet, just correct aim socket. And from here, we have the option of getting our selection. So if we search for select, come over here to editor, we can see we have get selected asset data, get selected assets, so on and so on. We want our selected assets. We want to iterate through all of these. So we're going to run a for each loop. And here, because we know the type we want, we're going to go ahead and cast to a static mesh. So now if I go through and I'll print off all of these here, we can kind of see in the log what has actually you know, been selected. So if I right click on the attacker, run correct aim socket, go back to the output log, you can see we printed out attacker. So it prints out the name of the asset. Moving forward, now we want to work on the actual socket. So pretty much the logic is we want to find the socket, make sure it exists. If it does exist, we check its rotation to see if it matches the rotation that we want. If it does, do nothing. If it doesn't, then what we want to do is we want to correct that rotation. Then we want to check it out. So this will be for version control if you have it, and then save it. So to begin, we need to get that socket. So here, if we search for socket, we'll see find socket. And here we have the socket name. So I'm going to create two variables here. And first one's going to be F name. This one's just going to be called socket name. If I can change it. And we can plug that in. So we have that. Now we want to have another one. This will be for the rotation, but we'll get that here in a second. But now that we have the socket, we can see the retype is the U static mesh socket. So from here, that's basically your generic information. So we have the socket name and we have the relative rotation, location, scale, so on and so on. 
We're interested in the rotation. So we're going to get the relative rotation. And we want to check the z, yeah, the z so the yaw. So let's see. We want to see, does this equal, in our case, we have a specific value, which is 90. So we're going to check this against the float and set this for target yaw and set it to 90. So if the yaw equals the target yaw, we do nothing. If it does not, meaning our yaw is different than 90, then we want to correct it. So now that we have that, we know what we need to run it on. So here, we can search for rotation, and you'll have set relative rotation. We're going to plug that into false, so that way it only runs if we do not have a matching yaw. And here, to simplify things, we could just basically leave this zeroed out, or we could create a, another variable for the rotation, but I'm just going to set target yaw and plug it into yaw. Keep it nice, simple, and clean. So now that we've corrected it, now we have to save or check out and save the asset. So from here, we're going to search for checkout. We're going to check out the loaded asset, and we want to plug in to our cast aesthetic mesh, or we can even do the ray element, doesn't really matter. And we also want to save. So here we search for save, probably up at the top, and save loaded asset. Same thing, we plug in the asset to save to our casted mesh. All right, so that should be the correct logic. Let's see what breaks. So we're gonna run these on the attacker and the hollow site. So hollow site zeroed out on rotation for uh, S underscore aim, and the attacker is as well. So let's begin, go to optics, gonna filter by static mesh, select the attacker, and the hollow site. We're going to right click, run correct aim socket. All right, so here you can see no change happened. So let's go ahead and try to figure out why. So on completed, I'm going to run out, do a print string, and write finished correcting aim sockets. So that way I know everything's pretty much been ran. And let's run a log on. Let's see, so we find the socket. S underscore. Ah, so I never set the uh, value. So here, socket S underscore aim, we never actually checked. So S underscore aim. That also led me to check another variable here, or let me rephrase that, checking to ensure that the actual socket that it returned is valid, because this is returning a pointer. So we're going to search for is valid. And if it's valid, then we run the rest of the logic. So set that. Okay, so now let's run the same logic. So they are still not rotated. Right click, scripted asset actions, correct aim socket. Here we have 90, and here we have 90. So now they've been corrected, so the hollow site works. And let's also check our attacker, which also works. So that is good to go. It went through. And if you are connected to version control, it'll automatically go through and check out any of the assets that you're changing in this case and apply the save to them. So from here, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and actually write out, which you can kind of see. Uh, let me unrotate these real quick. You can kind of see what all has been running. So if I clear the output log, rerun it. You can see we obviously have our finished message and we can see which ones we try to change. So we try to change the attacker and we try to change the hollow site. Not the most clear in terms of messages, so it probably wouldn't hurt to go ahead and before these actually fire, run your own log pretty much. So we're gonna run another print string and we're just gonna give it the message of, actually let's do the name of the mesh first so we're going to get the name of the mesh. We're going to append has had aim socket corrected. And in my opinion, that's a good enough message there. So that's what we're going to run. And then these are going to naturally just going to print out their own logs. So we're going to run one final, basically kind of like a, uh, a line breaker. So let's go back a little bit. Like so. All right. 
set these back to zero. Let's clear out the log and run it. And here we have it. So right off the start, we can see attacker has had the aim socket corrected. We have our line break. Then hollow site has had the aim socket corrected. Then we have our line break, so on and so on. So now that we have a general idea, we can run through pretty much every asset. And this is just to be kind of lazy, so we can select from the top to the bottom, go through, and let's clear this out. And run correct aim socket. It's already finished. And here we can go through and see. So Microdot has had the aim socket corrected. Pretty much all of them have. So well, not all of them. Actually quite a bit. So that makes me kind of curious as to which ones are... Uh, I wonder what the old values were, basically. Problem being, I can't control Z, but... Anyways, uh, you can actually control Z, so before you make these changes, so we know that if we run false, we're going to make a change. We're going to make our final improvement. And if we search for undo, should have, yeah, create copy for the undo buffer. And on the object, that is going to be our static mesh. And just same thing, make sure everything's plugged in, we can clean it up. And now we are officially good to go. So that's going to be all for this video. I hope that was kind of helpful. And good to know, because I have some of these changed to Nanite, which I need to revert. But hopefully that was useful. Uh, in the past like two hours, I've created uh, three different versions of these. One for the aim socket, one for finding all that don't have a valid aim socket, one for actually adding the aim socket, which requires C++, and then one for going through the actual reticle materials and setting their uh, tiling mode to clamp, so that way they don't tile when applied as a, uh, well, applied as a texture to our reticle material. But yeah, they're very useful, and it's easier to spend, you know, five to 20 minutes writing a simple one that will help you later down the road. Because I mean, quite frankly, if you end up having like a day where you import a ton of optics, for example, just going through the process and selecting them all and having it generate the aim socket for you to where all you have to do is just go in and adjust just the location, not the rotation, not the name or anything like that. That alone is a big time saver. But anyways, I digress. Do what you want to do and I'll see you in the next tutorial.